thank you everybody for joining us on the Conscious Life Expo podcast. My name is Melanie, and today we have a very special speaker and guest today. Her name is Shelly Reef, and she specializes in interdimensional connection through sound, frequency, and guided meditation. She is the founder of Therapy Heart Practitioner Certification and co-developer of anti-gravity restorative yoga taught in over 40 countries. And Shelly is passionate about leading retreats on conscious evolution. How are you doing today, Shelly? Thank you so oh, much for being with us. Wonderful. Thank you, Melanie. It's wonderful to be here and it's wonderful to connect with uh, everyone who will be joining us at the expo this year. Yes, and you will be joining us, and um, you are going to be hosting a free lecture at the Conscious Life Expo in February 2024, and that is going to be on Sunday, February 11th at 6 p.m. to 6.45 p.m., and before we get into the details of that, I would just like to start with you and how you got started and along your journey that has led you to where you are now. Hmm. Uh, if I didn't say that it all started um, in my very early childhood, <laughs> um, I would not be saying the truth. Uh, it all started with a light that would show up in my in my bedroom. Uh, I remember this as early as seven or eight years old, and meditating became my favorite thing to do. And there was always a light and a connection. Um, and then I began to draw um, what I would see in visions um, on my walls, <laughs> my poor parents, um, that later in my life, when I got to be in around my 20s, I noticed that the things I was drawing on my walls was actually manifesting. And these were things that were taking me out and around the world. Like I very suddenly and unexpectedly wound up in Japan where I met my first Buddhist teacher who I studied with for um, some years. And uh, um, so at a certain point in my late 20s, early 30s, that it happened so many times that the past had been foreseen and then and then happened that I began to wonder if it could be reverse engineered, if I could um, choose something that I wanted to happen in my future. And it was about that time that the whole, um, that the whole uh, manifest your future and thoughts are things and what the bleep do we know and Abraham Hicks and all of this was just starting to come out. And it was so exciting and relieving because then I wasn't alone anymore. And I got to kind of dive into those communities. Um, so obviously there was a kind of a spiritual foundation and always guides, always a light and always guides that over the decades, that conversation became more and more refined um, to up until now when they actually can speak through me. Um, when uh, when I'm able to shut myself off enough and allow that to happen, they definitely play the instruments for me. Um, when I began the instruments, it was more mechanical, but once I learned them, um, I noticed that when I was playing in for large groups um, and sometimes individuals, that something would kind of come over the room and uh, time would stop and uh, and it would go deeper than I alone would be able to take it. And oftentimes the instruments even would make sounds or I would start chanting um, uh, things that, um, that I normally wouldn't be able to do by myself. So uh, the instruments came into my life when I was teaching aerial yoga. Um, I started to become a little frustrated when I was teaching Shavasana in the hammock because people are hanging, they're supported, floating. They immediately go into a childhood regression. They go straight back to the womb and these deep, deep healings were happening so spontaneously. So the guided meditation became my favorite part of the whole class. 
but I felt blocked in by the music, the beautiful music, a lot of Jonathan Goldman um, that I was using, uh, um, but I had to end when it ended or change when it changed. And I wanted, I really had a desire to produce my own music so I could be present to the need in the guided meditation at any given moment because when we're truly working as sound healers with guided meditations, with our voices, with instruments, um, uh, whatever is delivered has to be in the present moment. It cannot be scripted or timed. Otherwise it's just a, it's a delivery. It's not a performance. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a happening and unfolding and unveiling, so to speak. And so uh, uh, while I was living in Bali sometime later, uh, I got called to a gathering of 88 healer women in Salt Lake City. And that is where the crystal tones, crystal singing bowls are made, which you can see I'm surrounded by here at the gallery in San Diego. This is where I do all of my work when I'm home in San Diego. Uh, and I met my first crystal bowls and I said, how much is that one? And she told me and I said, oh, I could never. And somehow I walked away with five and it all began. And the bowls then led me to Sedona, which is where I met the woman who developed these harps some 20 years ago. So these are zither style harps. They're absolutely beautiful, redwood. Um, zither style harps that are tuned in a chord meaning you don't have to be a trained musician to play them you can play them very intricately but I can train anyone to play them in a short enough amount of time and they're made to be played on the body of the person so you lay them right on the chest of the person and then play <laughs> These beautiful harmonies and the the frequency, the resonance, literally, um, literally goes into, of course, the physical body, and uh, does it does amazing work to, um, on all levels of of human, you know, physical, mental, emotional. Uh, so since um, since I. Well, then I started realizing that I could tune the bowls and the harps to play together. And then I found these remarkable crystal chimes and realized that I could tune those to match my other instruments. And then eventually, of course, I found the monochords and the same thing, learned how to orchestrate them all. So, uh, so. Um, it's been kind of this unfolding, um, and alongside that, there's another unfolding that happened that started also in my childhood, and I only recently looped it back in, but came to understand the importance of frequency and why I'm speaking this language of tone uh, uh, and bringing forth the very specific kind of healing and guided meditations that I am um, alongside the guides um, who are interdimensionals. Um, it, it's my origin where I come from. Uh, it took me a long time to understand that, but I had to go to every other um, every other star seed healer at all of the trade shows and talk to them. And amazingly, I would receive the same answer from everyone. And so I finally came to accept it myself. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I would have gone through life thinking I was making it up, I think. Uh, so there are these beautiful um, interdimensionals. Uh, um, I used to call them the beings of light. And now I've settled on the family of light because they are very familial. And one specific female who channels through me from time to time uh, and but alongside that there was also the other kind of um, off-planet interaction the kind that we maybe don't appreciate that much 
the kind where we actually get taken against our will or lose large uh, amounts of time, so on and so forth. I have a large history with this um, that in my early 30s, I learned or I didn't learn intentionally some it, I got scared by it I didn't like the feeling that you know I was being taken against my will and I had two events that involved other people one was a group of people and the other was two of us and then I had confirmation and I knew that it was all very real and so I used my background in meditation and also the work that I've been doing with my guides for my whole life to create a, almost like a wall, a shield of will that this will not happen to me again. And it didn't happen for 30 years. Um, Recently, when I started kind of hanging out with my friends at the Earth Files and the Richard Dolans of the world, <laughs> uh, my curiosity reopened, and that was enough. And immediately after my curiosity about it resurfaced, there was another incident. And so now it really deepens my work and my, con my uh, conversation um, not just with myself, but with what I have to offer, because especially, uh, I know you just only asked me about my origins, <laughs> but uh, um, I guess the origins lead right up to this very moment. Um, we're always being originated every, every new waking second. Uh, um, in this moment, it is so important in the world that people are given the tools that they need to be with what's happening off planet, including the sides of it that maybe we don't want, you know, interaction with greys and reptilians, not accepting them into their lives, but learning how to become, uh, learning how to become, um, uh, autonomous within the self, um, learning how to create that shield of will, um, and learning how to navigate the thoughts in the mind, um, learning how to not entertain thoughts that are attracting that which we don't want, including, you know, off planet contact, and how to attract that which we do want, how to discern the difference between the two. And I feel it's so important right now because uh, um, in the very near future, I feel it's very possible that some form it's being led up to in the media and the mainstream media, you know, that it's now being recognized as of just this year, finally, by the government um, and the media is weighing into that, but it's very possible that there be some sort of disclosure and then um, kind of a grappling for the reins of who controls that narrative. And at that point, I feel like it's very important for people to understand that they are sovereign and that they can choose where they stand in this rather than um, allowing themselves to be manipulated by fear, fearful media. Um, and so, uh, so all of the work has wrapped itself into one, the, um, cosmic contact sound journey that I am presenting at the conscious life evolution, conscious life, sorry, that's the name of my retreat at the conscious life expo. <laughs> my retreat is, uh, is conscious evolution retreat. Um, so we're all in the same ballpark here. Um, and this is the work that I teach deeply at my retreats is navigating the mind and using sound as a tool to go there. Uh, so the journey that I'll be doing is an actual cosmic contact journey 
It was given to me over the last, I'd say, seven years by my guides in bite-sized increments, um, always given to me when I was working with groups. Um, they would take me a little bit further and a little bit further because I feel that I had to be ready to hold the space for the people. Um, and uh, it's a journey that is both very safe and uh, has always only ever had a positive um, experience, um, been experienced positively by those receiving it, um, and leads one safely into uh, specifically the realm of the pineal as a sanctuary within to connection with the high self and the high self leads the way to connection with off planet benevolent contact and so it's all done in this very beautiful loving controlled safe environment and the beauty of it is that the tools of it can be um, delivered i can deliver these tools to people they don't need me to do it they don't need another person present um, they don't need a hypnotist they don't need you know that whole process they can learn this, you know, it takes some time. That's why the retreats uh, are very important because it gives us the time to dive in deeply and, uh, and really and deliver those tools to people so that they become sovereign, they become autonomous, they know the difference between when they're in their frontal lobe, visualizing and creating, when they're in the monkey mind, the jungle of everything, and when they're in the sanctuary of the pineal, which is where we connect to the crown, we connect to um, to the intelligence, uh, light intelligence, uh, universal intelligence, cosmic intelligence. Uh, that's how it began. <laughs> that's so fascinating. I can definitely see how this journey for you would be very expansive. And for those who are reaching out to learn more. Um, what what can they expect from these, I would call tunings or healings and through this sound journey that you are offering and teaching? What can they expect from that perspective? Hmm. You know, I've I call them upgrades be, because we're working with frequency and frequency is the language of the universe color is the sound of the, or the the language of earth anywhere we go on earth people respond the same to different colors but and light but tone is the is the common language of the universe and especially with the crystal singing bowls the the harps tend to eat tend to ground people. They come in different tunings, some of them. This one is very grounding and pure love, but the angelic harp is pure expansiveness um, and, 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 and angel, angel frequency. Um, so what people can expect is to be taken deep, quickly, safely, to feel extremely relaxed, safe, to let go of, um, to release blocks and um, stuck places within where there's been holding and blocks that could be a lifetime or even generational. Um, uh, we create a safe environment, letting go of that is part of the part of the process of being able to make this connection i think the most important part that people get from this though is a being led into an inner sanctuary that is always there for the person once you enter this sanctuary uh, the person fills out what it looks like what it feels like what what the environment is it's not something that i plant into anyone's minds because it's as individual as a person is 
This is individual as a fingerprint. There are no two people have the same inner sanctuary, that ultimate safe, healing, healed place where they connect with the authentic, true essence of themselves, their high self. No two could be the, the same. And so um, once we get to that point, I mean, people are already very deep, but then they get to allow it to be revealed to them what this sanctuary is. And uh, and it's amazing when I ask people, if I ask a room full of people what their sanctuary was, it varies from, you know, a gold gilded red velvet castle, you know, with marble floors to a crystal well swimming through space. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's completely different. There's no right, there's no wrong. Sometimes it is just an experience of pure space. The interesting thing though, is that once people enter this sanctuary through this method, they tend to keep that same sanctuary for the rest of their life. It seems to be a very true process. It may alter slightly, but but over time, it tends to remain the same. It's a huge gift for people to have. And then if they want to go deeper, there's always ways to connect and take it deeper. Yes, yes. And I was just seeing here on your um, your free lecture that you are going to be safely guiding everyone there to into the interdimensional meditation that will assist them in discovering with what benevolent ET contacts may be waiting for them. And so can you share with us a little bit about what we can expect at your workshop that is going to be on Sunday, February 11th? Certainly. Um, so, so what the process will look like, and also the, the journey that I just shared about the sanctuary is part of that process. And so what people are probably curious about is the cosmic contact and, and that and contacting the benevolent off planet uh, source information that may be waiting for you. You know, we all have the capacity to connect to off planet uh, intelligence and um, it's kind of like we choose our friends. We can't choose our family so much, but as we go through life, we can choose our friends. We can choose our work. We can choose how we spend our time. Well, we also can choose the frequency of the contact that we wish to have with the universe. And if what we're choosing is fear-based, or manipulative, then that is probably what the person will attract into their life. That's not what I'm doing here, ever. <laughs> I take people as far as I can in the other direction um, to connect people with benevolent contact. And so, um, so entering that sanctuary is part of the process. It's part of the process of being very safe and connecting to the high self because through the ego um, or through the chattering mind, you know, it's easy for us to make up all kinds of things or, or try to drive the process. It's very important to get to that disconnected place. So physically what it would look like is um, uh, depending on how many people are in the room, um, most likely people will be seated in their chairs if people, um, if there's space, if people want to lay down, that's wonderful as well. Um, uh, and it begins with the instruments. In a moment, I'll give you a demonstration of the sound of all the instruments together. I have the crystal bowls set up back here, all the instruments. Um, and so you can hear kind of what that sound journey, that frequency experience is that you'll be receiving. 
And then it's a guided meditation. It's very specific. It's very different than anything I've ever heard. Um, it was delivered to me by my guides, the interdimensionals, the family of light. Uh, and so you go deep within through layers. You'll experience being outside of yourself, being right in your auric field, feeling that being right inside of your third eye, the, fr the frontal lobe of the third eye. We'll do some work in the frontal lobe. It's very important because this is where we manifest. This is where we intentionally visualize. And it's so important for people to understand the difference between when they're in the frontal lobe and the back part of the of the third eye, the pineal. Uh, we'll take a little journey through the monkey mind so that we get to know what that is. Uh, and, uh, you know, say hello to our egos and goodbye to our egos. We'll do some cleansing work, purifying work, and um, protection work on the way in before we step into that beautiful sanctuary. Um, at that point, you'll be led to, um, to commune with your high self after you've taken in the beauty of the sanctuary. Commun communion with high self. And of course, we linger there. You'll be able to ask your high self um, questions that you may have, or simply to ask to receive any information that your high self may be wanting you to know. You can also ask to receive healing at that time. Uh, the high self, when, you know, it's kind of like theta state in meditation, in that state, that state is, is, um, is a state of healing. It's more restful even than sleep. It's a state of healing greater than we could ever have in our cognitive mind. And so, so we will definitely allow for all of that wonderful work to be done while we're in that state. And this also is a connection that you'll be able to take with you. Um, uh, it's very clear, it's very specific, and once you're led to that place, you will know that journey back to high self. Of course, the more, the more, the more I get to work with people, you know, the more adept at this they become. But my goal is to share everything that is given to me as quickly and easily as I can. It's probably not the smartest business model, but it is the most of the heart that it can possibly be. And I believe that that's part of the authenticity we need to seek in the world right now. Um, you know, going into 2024, it becomes, uh, it becomes very important that we all begin to lean into the greater good for all rather than the greater good for our personal bank accounts. It's part of our evolution, you know, out of 3D and into five. Uh, so the final part is once you're, you're protected, you're connected, you're one with high self, then you have the choice if you want to or not, it's not required to allow the high self to open the pathways through the crown to any benevolent cosmic intelligence that may be wanting to connect with you. And uh, at that point, no matter how many people are in the room, uh, you know, when people are laying receiving sound healings, there's always, you know, there's always coughing, snoring, scratching, rolling, you know, <laughs> these little, little interruptions in the room. But at that point, every single time it has become absolute still point. And uh, in the last session that we did, we had 40 people here at Soul of Yoga in San Diego for the cosmic connection journey. And they entered that state of cosmic connection and no one budged for 40 
five minutes until we were out of time and it was, I had to bring everyone out. It was beautiful, such perfect still point, such high connection. And, and, and what are benevolent beings or extraterrestrials? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, well, as we know, you know, the universe is a very expansive place. Um, verging on on it's infinite infinite in our minds we can't even really grasp how expansive it is and it's very certain that there are many many life forms out there and about the life forms that we're connecting with it's not we have to go beyond thinking about it in the 3D manner and think about it more in interdimensional or 5D manner. This is part of our evolution from 3D into 5D. That's what all the all the excitement is about with 5D is that we get to be here in our physical bodies. We don't disappear yet. <laughs> That's quite a ways down the line. We're still here still look the same but we begin to communicate on in the psychic realms in the interdimensional realms and so there is a lot of life in this universe that is assisting humanity at this time that is shining its protection and its wisdom down upon us um, uh, you know, these would be uh, probably the beings that are showing up, um, uh, you know, the lights that are seen around the nuclear sites, you know, where there's information, they're not trying to get us to build more nuclear, they're trying to get us to figure it out that we need to stop, you know, uh, stop with the nuclear threats. Um, there's something about nuclear energy that ripples out, it affects the universe it throws things off balance in a way that probably we obviously we don't understand yet. Um, and so there's a lot of benevolent life form surrounding the earth right now, trying to connect, wanting to connect, wanting to lift humanity to a clearer, um, truer, higher state of being. Um, uh, and uh, I truly believe at this point that enough of us have awakened to that, that we've reached that tipping point. Um, I do believe, you know, 2024 is kind of stacked to be <laughs> uh, an eventful year. Um, uh, you know, as the light grows stronger, you know, when, when you open the door to the closet with a little monster in it, the monster doesn't say, oh, you found me, all right. <laughs> I'll go to sleep now, right? It gets bigger and louder. And I think we're in for a lot of that on a lot of levels. This year, we could see some dark underbelly of humanity um, show itself in this year. But, you know, with every single stroke of that, the light becomes stronger. We 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 deepen our conviction and mm -hmm. so there's all kinds of beautiful benevolent intelligence out there to to come through um there are destinations you know there's the pleiadians the arcturians you know there's sirius you know, there's all kinds of kind of physical destinations in the universe but then there's also infinite interdimensional non-destinations uh, that are um, that are here to um, to remind us of our sovereignty to, rem to uh, remind us um, that 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 a lot has been um, a lot has been done to cause us to forget intentionally. A lot has been done to blind us. And um, the intention of these benevolent beings is to remove those blinders. And 
sometimes it's just a matter of the person saying i'm willing to receive for anybody who's interested in the free lecture again that is going to be sunday february 11th at 6 p.m to 6 45 p.m with shelly reef and that is the cosmic sound journey and would you like to share with us a little bit of music? Certainly. Let me jump back here, so pardon me. center of your center, the heart of your heart.
to become a cleansing wave. Every inhale. Like a wave that rolls up onto the shore, collecting, capturing. And every exhale, like a wave that draws back into the ocean, purifying in its body.
fluid becomes the emotional pathways. Vibrant becomes the energy body.
you begin to capture this connectedness, this oneness within self, oneness of high self and universal love and intelligence. begin to breathe that up to the surface of our being now, to integrate that expansiveness into time, space, reality, this moment, you, right now, right here, your physical body, your emotions, your energetic body. I'd like to invite you now to reopen your eyes and connect with us here. Connect with those who are here in this moment. Connect with those who will be joining later. All of us. Anyone who connects through this work encircled here with us. Feel this circle. Feel this group.
humanity, to be one that is the essence of the future that sustains life and love and sovereignty for all living beings, compassion. Keep that flow open, that encompassing of the earth via the light grids and that pouring out of love frequency, light frequency into the hearts of humanity. If you wish, if it's comfortable and good for you to do so, I invite you to continue. Otherwise, you can come right back through those light grids to that pillar of light, drop right down into the center of us, light workers encircled here. And draw right back into your heart. Breathe into your bodies. Find your body, your fingers, your toes. And with the eyes open, just take a moment here and gratitude, connection. And then drawing your awareness back into yourself, have a look around the space that you're in. Have a look at yourself, your body. <laughs> have a look at your hands, move your hands. Uh, maybe look at a clock, look at the passing of time, look at the things in your environment that represent time and space and 3D reality to you. And as you anchor back into 3D reality, I'm going to invite you to continue to connect to that other beautiful higher place within so that you, we all become one, 3D reality and also connected with the infinite intelligence of source love in the universe. And with that, I say <laughs> aho, <laughs> namaste. First of all, I just want to say to everyone, please do the work every day. Find your rituals that take you into your own sovereignty so that at least once a day, drain your chakras, right? Um, do forgiveness work, release all the cording with other people even if they're your most beloved, just for a moment so you remember who you truly are and keep making that brighter and brighter. Try to practice every single day. 